All right, in this video, we're going to look at a small slideshow application. And for the slideshow application, we're going to combine a couple projects we've seen in this chapter. So if you remember, uh, we had the uh, image swap application at the beginning. It had, I think, four pictures of uh, scenes that were of people fishing. Uh, so we're going to combine that, and but instead of actually letting the user click on thumbnails to change the image, we're going to rotate the pictures automatically using a timer. So let's take a look at the app. Well, let's run the application first. So I'll just open this in my default browser. We can see our fishing slideshow. There's catch and release, deer at play, the big one, and roaming bison. Those were the images that we saw before where we'd click the thumbnails and we could bring them up. In this case, we're using a timer to automatically advance through the images. So let's take a look at how this works. So we have our HTML page. Uh, we have our heading that says fishing slideshow. And then we see an unordered list. And the unordered list has um, links to each of these images that are in our images folder. So our, the release image, the deer.jpg, the hero.jpg, and the bison.jpg, all inside an ordered list. But if you remember, let's open it up again. We don't see a list on here. There's no list on this page. I see a picture and a caption with the heading at the top. Okay. Here is the paragraph that has the picture in it. Okay, That's the main image. And here is the caption. So this unordered list isn't actually displayed, but is used to generate uh, the images. We're going to take these, these uh, hypertext references out here and use them to generate and preload our images. If we look at our CSS, you can see that our unordered list is set to display colon none. So the unordered list is there, but it is not being displayed but we are going to make use of it in our JavaScript. And we've seen that before. So let's take a look at the JavaScript where the magic happens to make this work. All right, so we start out uh, getting a reference called caption to the caption for our image. And main image gives us a reference to that main image, the image element that was on our page. So that would be these two elements right here. So we get references to both of those, and then we use the dollar function in query selector all for all the anchor tags. So those are the anchor tags that are located uh, within our image list, that unordered list. So we're going to go find all those hyperlinks. Now we're going to preload them. So we create an array to hold all of the images. It's going to be called image cache. And we set the first image to null, and then we run a loop, and then let's go through each one of our links one at a time. So for each one of the links that we're getting out of our unordered list here, for each one of those links, we're going to create a new image in memory. We're going to use the hypertext reference to set the source for the image. We're going to use the link's title to set the alt text for the image. And then we're going to take that image and add it on to the end uh, by using the dot, dot length property. We can add that on to the end of our array. So it's going to go through each of those four images. So it'll add an image zero, then an image one, then an image two, then an image three. So it's went through and preloaded those images into this array. Now we start our slideshow. Okay, so we have a set interval function here. And this is a little bit tricky to read because if you remember set interval, we have to tell it what function we want to run and how often we want to run it. So if you look here, we actually, rather than calling the function and writing it as, as a, its own function, it's an anonymous function. It doesn't have a name. We're just writing the code inside the set interval function okay separated by a comma and then 
the number 2000 to give us our 2000, our, uh, 2000 millisecond interval, which is two seconds. We could have written this code uh, as its own function and used a name there. Um, that's kind of the way I would prefer to do it, but this is how the example works. So I want to show you that you can do it. Uh, so I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it like this. So what does this function that we wrote inside the set interval function, what does it do? We have an image counter that started at zero. And each time through here, we're going to add one to image counter. So it'll start at zero, then it'll go to one, then it'll go to two, then it'll go to three. Okay. But then we're going to use the modulus operator to, to divide it by the length of our image cache. And we know that was four. So what does this do? This makes our image counter count zero, one, two, three. Uh, and when it gets to four, so when this increases to four and we divide it by the length of four, our remainder will be zero. Remember the modulus determines the, the, the remainder. So this actually makes the image counter go 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And it repeats over and over and over by using the modulo, modulo operator. That's a very common way for you doing animations, slideshows like this, uh, that we can make a set of numbers repeat by using something that counts up by one and dividing it by the length of the number of items that we want to repeat. D dividing with the modulus operator. So image counter is going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And what it's going to do is take item 0, set it to image. The next time through, item 1, set it to the image. Item 2, set it to the image. Item 3, set it to the image. And it's going to go back. Item 0, set it to the image. And each time we come through, uh, we will change the source for the main image and we'll change the alt text for the main image and we'll change the caption for the main image um, and that's this interval runs this function that is written right inside the set interval function uh, to constantly rotate the image every 2000 milliseconds